James Dean Rader to my right, Ben Askren, Shane Sparks, Sion Williams. We're all here. I feel like we've already uh, lived an entire show of stress in the half hour lead up to starting the show. Um, but we have a great weekend of wrestling before us. But first, checking in with Ben and Shane. How you guys doing? Um, I'm doing, doing pretty great. Well, Good to see you know. guys. I had uh, I had some wrestling parents. They they had they made the same comment that I made uh, on Tuesday, uh, on sorry Monday, and that's you know you guys look quite pretentious in your nice little office. And wrestling's a blue collar people. Grit, we're a gritty sport. You guys need to rub some dirt on the walls or something. <laughs> okay, Ben. I I podcast from my you know dungeon layer in my <laughs> mega hey, home. I got Wisconsin. a new decoration, Christian. Can you see it? No, I can't actually. I can't see it. What I does actually it say? put it on the wall. It, I, it's a, it's illegible. You can't read it. It doesn't matter what it says. I, ben says, "I'll read it. I'll read it." Since Christian can't, since this Christian can't see it, I will read it. 2022, <laughs> 2023, pick 'em champion of Flow Wrestling Radio Live. None other than Ben Askren. Yeah. Well, you know, I wasn't involved in that, so that's <laughs> why you won. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't even say their names. Yeah, you couldn't even say their names. Um, <laughs> All right, Shane and Shane coming. This is not the usual Shane Sparks backdrop. That means he's on location somewhere. Shane, where are you at? Ann Arbor, Michigan for uh, Michigan, Iowa tomorrow should be a fun duel. And uh, yeah, looking forward to it. I would say this real quick on the pickums. I mean, C didn't even realize Max Mirren was going to be an All American. So if you can't, if you can't get something that easy correct, <laughs> that's simple. you got to earn yourself into this pickup. Oh pool. my gosh, you guys listen to Man, your you, like are, are retroactive you, are you still on logic. The Let's take turns. Did you say Max Askren? Yes, he uh, did. No, no. <laughs> yes, he did. Okay. <laughs> Shane, what is uh, what's been the best duel so far for uh, that that you that you broadcasted that you can recall? Oh, that one last Friday night, Ohio State, Michigan. Yeah, yeah, that was, was a lot of fun. A lot of so fun good. to call that match. I love competitive duel meets. Yeah, it, so was, great. it was great. Did, did you have a feeling that that Davison was, or uh, excuse me, that Feldman was going to be able to get it done? Uh, that, you know, didn't surprise me. I mean, you guys know how I am on this stuff. I mean, it's, it's who's ever better that day. And, and Feldman's really, really good. He scores a lot of points. I mean, I mean, truth be told, I mean, if somebody had a gun to my head, would I pick Davison? I would have, but yeah. you know, I mean, Feldman's really, really good, really good. He's I mean, Ohio state, Cause that, that it, it, it would take a gun to Shane's head to actually make a pick. I can confirm that. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Well, this was, yeah, I mean, and we'll get into the Vito. You know, we'll get into the Vito movie, I'm sure, here in a second. But there was a part of that Vito movie that made me laugh, too, because it's this stuff is, it's so hard to win. We talk about it all the time. You got to be ready every time. And if you're not, somebody's going to pick you off. I mean, it's that simple. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. Let's talk about the Vito film. It, it dropped yesterday. Ooh. Obviously, we're super proud of it. Very excited <laughs> about it. Uh, 90 minutes, feature length. Um Ben, Ben hasn't watched it. I can already tell. No, I am. Uh, I'm 47 minutes into it. Oh I thought gosh. it was great. Also, I I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, the dynamic between Vito and Dad and Yanni. Uh, it's really great. What'd you think, Shane? I thought it was awesome. I mean, I love. I've said this forever. I mean, the Flow films they are fantastic. Um, so many things to like about that film. Everybody's got a story. Uh, it's, and, I, and I just appreciate stories in this sport, too, where, you know, you, you got to battle some adversity. You got to get past things. I thought that was awesome. And, and I would just throw in this, too. I mean, best supporting actor in any film is Yanni Diakamahalas. I mean, that guy, just, I mean, the more <laughs> I watch him, I just think he's the coolest guy there is. And, um, I mean, watching those two, you know, the relationship with those two is pretty awesome. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it was great. I'll, I'll definitely uh, I'll watch it again. Can I counter that? Best supporting actor, Vogar. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he might have been better. He might have been better. I like he's Vogar. Good. Yeah, he's good. Genetics. I, I love, you know, I love how he referred to everything as a fight. I mean, that's one part I liked about, you know, some of the things he said. Like, it's a fight. Yeah, I love that. Uh, it's also a translation thing. The part, no, but the funny thing is, too. no, it's like, uh, no, he was like very spiritually saying, like, there's no pl plan. See, I crush. Yeah. Take I crush. See, single legs. Take no, no plan. Like his mind. We don't have fun. We just wrestle. It's yeah. your job. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought the Russian aspect was great. Like, you know, we don't really say things like we're proud of each other that I've had, but like, 
it was kind of cool him getting in. But then he said it's the happiest day of my life. Yeah, but then he did. He's like, you know, and you know, we really don't say this kind of stuff, but he's been uh, he's been softened by uh, love and family, and and, American and, culture, and, and America, oh. baby. I, I actually uh, haven't and seen Yanni, it yet. Uh, Vito's speed is just I'm, crazy. It just blows my mind how you can be that fast. Yeah, we should all uh, like a ninja. If I had thought ahead, we would have all we have had a coordinator like who can do the best like Vito hand movement, <laughs> who can match his speed the best. Definitely not Ben. Mm. Ben would be so slow. Oh not yeah, me. I got. I would have a great interpretation. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that I was I'm disappointed in though is that uh, at least the part I'm on, and I don't know how it finishes. So, but it's like, hey. He got the sports psychologist to figure out, you know, why he had these wild ups and downs uh, after the previous season, right? The Patrick Glory season. Um, and they, but then it kind of neglects talking about the Connor Flynn thing, which I thought was relevant. Sam and I would like to hear him talk about Sam Latona. Oh my gosh. Virginia <laughs> Tech, one of those guys. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. Well, it and then obviously the Ryan Crookham. Yeah. I mean, that would have been good. Ryan, well, the film was already shot by the time he had. Film was done by the yeah, time he, uh, lost to Crookham. They don't really fit into yeah. anything. I, they don't fit the narrative, but then also for young wrestlers, knowing that it's like it's probably going to be a continuous work in progress, um, and you're not going to just get one solution and then it's done. Boom, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks. Um, speaking of Yanni, he's wrestling Saturday. Do what? What time is that happening? Do we know? I don't know exactly. I think it might depend on the tournament that they're wrestling, like in between. Yeah. I thought it was like about noon or two o'clock. Yeah, I think there is kind of a set time. Um, I think it's like. We should know that, but let's before. Hey, did you have that in the pickums? No, but that should be a pickum. Well, what, yeah. Where are they wrestling? I thought there's. I figured it's an international tournament. When I saw Saturday. It. Saturday. So see Colorado. who goes. It's it's what? Saturday. At the Colorado. RMAC Championships, <laughs> the Women's RMAC Championships. Yeah, and they're having the Pan Am okay. Olympic Trial or Olympic Qualifier wrestle off there. Nice. Okay. Um, where to next? We we missed some odds and ends from from yesterday's show or from two days ago's show, just because there was so much happening. We didn't, I don't think we talked about so much. Crook beating McNeil. We didn't talk about Brayton Lee beating Joey Blaze, which mm. Brayton Lee being back I'm is, back, I think, more notable than just the Blaze win because Brayton last year, man, this guy, he couldn't find a win. He fell from grace from the year before. He was really struggling. I mean, injuries were obviously a factor in all of that. But now 157 is already insane. If Brayton Lee is full-on Brayton Lee of, of old, that the weight gets even crazier. Now, I don't know if we can say, like, Brayton's back back, but beating Joey Blaze is a is a statement for for this year, considering the season that Blaze has had so far. What is I haven't heard much about Brayton all season. What's his record looking like? It's this like four and oh. I think something like that. Okay, so he just started wrestling again. Yeah. Well, you know, it's one of those things where he's had a fresh new school, fresh start, you know, reset. That that regularly works a lot good for a lot of guys when they go and get their mindset reset. Yeah, I hope can... I hope he's back. I like Brayton Lee. I think I need more than a Joey Blaze win to say yeah. he's back back yeah. because back back uh, two years ago, this guy was title contender. He was number one to start the year. He was my preseason pick, and yeah. I'm, I'm not ready to say that just quite yet. Well, we've had an emergence of, of Levi since that time, and Meyer Shapiro is now in the mix. Uh, he always wrestled Ja'Cory Teamer really well, as I recall. Yes. But, uh, yeah, so that's – Big, big stuff happening there, but this and, weekend, and Blake had some good wins, guys. But uh, I think J JD's right on this one. You look at his wrestle stat, and he's got he's got quite a few losses, and you know some of them are really good, and some of them are mediocre. It'll be a gauntlet for for anyone to place at this weight class. It's really t yes. really tough. But I hope he can go out strong. I always like Brayton Lee, like his game, good guy. So hope hope it can end well for him. And, at Indiana, who Indiana just beat Purdue. That's a big win for them. They've been, they're they're scrapping. But Ben will state champs. <laughs> Indiana State. <laughs> uh, that's Kabito that's doing what he needs to do. Yep. Okay. Uh, or do we want to get into this weekend's action? Or well, uh, let's yes. talk Nick Lee Yanni first, and then we can get okay, into the college yeah. stuff. Okay, let's do it. Go for it. Uh it. 
I'm not going to pretend to know exactly how this is going to go, but I do think it looks very similar to their Final X series where we get a lot of weird exchanges. A lot of, I think this is close. Would not surprise me if there's a controversial ending or two because it is a Yanni match. Yeah. Uh, but I think if I have to pick, I'm probably going Nick Lee because Lee tends to struggle with the guys who are fast twitch, strong, really good athletes. And Yanni is more of a technical, you know, wrestler, tactician type. So I think that plays into Lee's hand a little bit. Could Ben, what are your thoughts on this matchup? Yeah, I would say, I mean, it, it's going to be like a super close one with probably a lot of controversial sequences. And I don't know, Yanni seems to have struggles against Nick Lee for whatever reason. Um, he's lost to him multiple times now. So I'm going to go Nick Lee with zero confidence. And I think I'd prefer Yanni if I got the pick. Yeah, I, I think the key word here to me is tactics. Because if you if you go back and rewatch those matches, Nick Lee scored so many points off of Yanni's shots. Especially but, the last two and, late. And at the end, Yanni was up four and kept firing. Mm-hmm. And it lost him the match. Uh, you look at the final turn, which was really close, but I think, you know, rewatching it, I think he exposed. If if Yanni just brings his hips flat and doesn't try to score a position he doesn't need to win to win the match. He wins that match. Yeah. Tactics. And I just have a hard time seeing Yanni wrestling that tactically. Um, I don't know. Poor sounds really strong. but What I, is their overall record against each other at this point? 0-3 in freestyle for Yanni. It's 0-3. Okay. So yeah. I was thinking Yanni had one in there somewhere, but it, it is 0-3. He has a folk style win. Um, Olympic okay. Charles has an asterisk. No, I don't no, think it does. No, no asterisk. Backside sad boy hours can't count. Anymore. No, there's not an asterisk. No, he beat him two other times. I know. Those two count. <laughs> no. <laughs> you uh, stop it. Uh, uh, sad boy hours are a real thing. They're a real thing, but they're real matches. You think Nick Lee's not sad? He's not in there either. I don't think Nick Lee had fully... He doesn't have In 2021, feelings. was like, I'm going to make this Olympic team go on this run. Yeah. And Yanni did feel that way. So I think losing on the front side of Olympic trials probably mentally affected Yanni more than it did Nick Lee in 2021. Now it's a different story. Yeah, I mean, he still lost to him twice after that. I am picking Yanni. I think Yanni will win this time. Oh, nice. Um, I, I, for a couple reasons. One, the tactics thing. I just don't think he will wrestle. What um, about match one where he didn't necessarily blow it super did, late by shooting two? Well, let's talk about match one. Let's talk about match one where Yanni takes a, a, a shot on the edge and he gets hit for a caution in one. And then let's talk about the fact that they put him down and he got trap arm gutted. I don't think that, that was, was that was weird. That I'm not going to say bad call, good call. I'll say strange call. I'll say I don't see that very much. I don't see guys taking shots on the edge often and get put down in parterre and give up a caution in one. So if you think we'll see that again, then maybe that – but that – that was a three-point swing there in that match. So you look at that, weird call, weird tactics. I think there, there's a thing where with Yanni, we, we can all agree he has better results against international competition, right? True. I think there is a, a, a water returns to its level thing here. While he is 0-3 against this guy, maybe I'm a slow learner. But I'm also going to say, well, I also have a lot of data against all the other wrestlers in the world to say Yanni may be a little bit better. So over time, things kind of re- revert to the mean. And I think Yanni gets it this time. I'm not saying he's going to make the team. I'm not saying anything. I'm saying, I think this weekend it's Yanni. Well, I'm going to say, you know, CP, you're saying a lot of woulda, coulda, shoulda in there. That's what I'm hearing. A lot of those, uh, <laughs> I don't but think so. the, the fact is, you know, he beat him the last three times and, you know, it's not a lot of woulda. The first one could have been a lot of woulda, coulda, shoulda, but he beat him two times after that. Um, tactic, I don't know about tactic. You know, Nick Lee, Kale, Penn State, uh, you know, Casey, they always come up with a game plan for whoever they're wrestling. Um, but, but if I don't game, think it's going to be a close match this time. Okay. Ooh. 
Well, we'll see. Uh, we got a question. Whoa, who is the that, most that biased? Is a bold statement. We got a question. Yeah. Who's the most biased on the show? And when Sion is on, it's, it's easy. It's Sion. Ah, come on. I am not biased. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He even so shaved true. his head bald. He's like, he's like, he's like, no. Well, he did? Oh, it's all Show the me way. a picture of that. All Send the me. way. He, oh, he, zoom in. Zoom in a little he more. Went full kale. He went full kale. He went full kale on it. Man. The razor oh, wow. with the shine. Yeah. Look at that shine. Oh, there we go. I, we're I just in. take the facts. <laughs> the fact is, you're crazy See, if you think it's a blowout for Nick Lee. Yes, you are Clip crazy. This moment. Clip this this moment. Was crazy. Huh? Right. We knew this. Yeah. Yeah. Don't say so, but you know what? The loser See, buys. Did you become a better wrestler when you shaved your head? I haven't been on the mat since. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> All right. So I think it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fire two out of three. A lot, a lot on the line here. The the opportunity to qualify the weight. I don't know if it'll have a seating implication. I don't know if it much matters really. Those two should be opposite one another, so it doesn't really make probably much of a difference. And really, all right. The, but what you want to be? I'm going to move us on. Christian, Christian, Christian. want to be? We have ben, a big Friday night. We got to go. Hold on, Ben. You can relax. <laughs> we got That's a hot a, date. A, we got a, a hot date with the Big Ten Network. It's an <laughs> Olympic year, brother. Um. Andrew Alirez is the guy you want to avoid, I think, in this bracket. So if you can get opposite that guy, that might be, that might be helpful. Uh, but yes, okay. we do have to talk about a lot of Big Ten action. Um, where do we want to start? Penn State, uh, Ohio State, well, GD. Yeah, that's chronological. They wrestle first. It's five thirty Central. So, am I the pick recorder again? You're yeah. gonna have to do it. Yeah. Oh my goodness, <laughs> you guys. You have to pay me uh, overtime for this work here. Is there a scenario Ohio State gets blanked here? I think there oh, is. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Yeah. They oh, can... Jane, Jane came in there strong. I know. Well, just, I mean, it, it is, right? I mean, that's that's the reality of it. Yeah. I mean, it comes down to 41 and 49, maybe 25. You give yourself a chance. But 57. Ryder Rogotsky, oh. baby, coming off the top rope. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> yeah. that. With a lat whip, reaching behind. That's the thing. The, the transitive game is, is something that the Ohio State fans can cling to a little bit here with, with Rogotsky. He smashes Jaden Bullock, who gave Truax a tough match. But, um, you know, mm -hmm. Mendez versus Bartlett, that's, you know, it's tight, but you favor probably Bo right now. 49. I think D'Amelio is a clear favorite but if Kasek goes i don't know man I, and i'm do I'm we know they're wrestling Kasek for sure no that's why i said if Kasek okay. goes i don't Kale know just did media yeah. day and said we don't have to decide by friday it i believe it would be Kasek's sixth event so i actually think they might go evans just to i do too keep that red shirt a little bit longer mm -hmm. and you don't need him to win this duel let's say ohio state wins 41 49 you think Mendez beats Bartlett? Yeah. Why? I think I'm going with Mendez too. I think Ooh. he beat he beats him here. He beats him in this one, but loses to him the next uh, at uh, Big Tens and Nationals. I could see that. I could see that. Um, I think it's a close match where Mendez almost scores, almost scores. He's right there to get the takedown. Doesn't quite get it. Doesn't quite plan him, and Bo kind of. Snakes them late, gets a late counter or a ride or something weird, and you're left thinking Mendez might be better, but he didn't win the match. Uh, I, that's what I. That's my anticipation for this one. But I think it's it's mm. the it's obviously the marquee match, and it's interesting. And I'm wondering how much is just clouded by the weird Cole Matthews loss that Mendez had because if you coming out of CKLV, we were like. Mendez is the only guy that can challenge real woods and then he loses to Cole yeah. Matthews You're like, all right, maybe we got a little ahead of ourselves But Cole Matthews is not a chump. The guy was ranked number one next year <laughs> last yeah. year yeah. last year He was yeah. but he he's not a chump for sure But he has had some horrible losses this year um, He's not been good. beaten and beaten soundly on multiple occasions and so that that still causes alarm. Listen, we're we're not talking about is a guy good, is a guy bad. We're talking about can someone beat real Woods, and no one did that last year. That's in this field this year. So the the barrier for you know a, a result really having weight is just a lot lower when when you're talking about someone as good as real. And that that's kind of my point. Yeah. Guys, was 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 Pitt Ohio State the week after 
Vegas. Yes. The following it, weekend. It was like less than a week weeks. after. Yeah. So so that really? that's where the Mendez Cole Matthews. Like I'm putting. I'm just not putting a lot of stock into it. And I love Cole Matthews, but I don't. Um, I think the timing of that match is what's is the most important thing when you look at that equation. Hangover chat match. Can't count it. Hangover chat I mean, match. That, that, oh my, you guys are you guys are turds <laughs> with all the matches you don't want to count. I, but at the same time, Mendez had the match won and lost it at the end. Exactly. Exactly. Then this it. is how science Mendes is done. You get to pick and choose stuck. your data. Yeah. <laughs> well, I I do know that much. <laughs> okay. Uh, um. So are we going? Do we have lines? Are you are you reading the lines? Well, we have lines, but JD now this week I think he maybe more wisely uh, is not having us pick all of the matches. Um. I don't know, I, I think we could probably still talk about all the matches even though we're not yeah. picking all of them. Yeah. Of course. Uh, Braden Davis, Brendan McCrone, Davis minus five and a half points. Man, this is. Macron can kind of give up some points and make things interesting. He's good on top. We've seen Braden is pretty solid on the mat. Um, tech fall. <laughs> for who? <laughs> Braden Davis, tech fall. Tech fall? My, listen. Uh, I mean, I was just going to say, after watching Macron last week just, just fall to his back, um, I, Braden Davis is covering this line. There's no way he's not. Really? I'm going Davis. I am yeah, too. That's how I felt. I'm way I'm not more going nervous tech about that. I I was like, uh, that's uh, six points. All right. I was, but I ultimately arrived at the same conclusion. Although I, less uh, bullish as as you all. He's still None a true freshman, guys. Davis tech fall. Correct. All right. Mark it in. It would book. be so 125 if he loses here, guys. I mean. Oh my god, I, that'd be. So I think Davis is <laughs> really be so 125. Listen, is he that immune? That he can be the only one in all of 125 that doesn't. That's slip what I'm on saying. At some point, he has to slip up. Yeah. He's a true freshman, 125. But I, I, I see him slipping up at like big his, like, Or against Drake, or against mm -hmm. Matt Ramos, or right against Patrick McKee. Like, it ain't gonna be this one. But he, you would maybe say, you know, rankings wise, he he actually is in front of most of the other Big Ten guys at 125. Yeah. But I'm saying like. He has to get upset at some point too. Yeah, <laughs> this doesn't count. I don't think it's here though. Yeah, this is the, your <laughs> exhibit A is my exhibit A, Ben. You thinking like, oh, it'll be against someone like Drake or Pat? No, that's what the way one twenty five works. It's like, oh yeah, Anthony Noto, boom, Diego Sotelo, right? You never saw that coming from the Harvard guy. So that's why Did not see it. Macron. If the fact that we don't see it coming is why I actually see it coming. Expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Uh, but uh, Brayden so Davis covers. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Brayden Davis covers. But I will clip right. the part where I didn't say that and make it sound like I predicted this. On the chat. Uh, Aaron Nagal versus Nick Buzakis minus four and a half. Um, I thought Buzakis would keep it close last week, and he did not do that. And so I'm gonna I'm gonna be more bearish on him, and I'm going Nagal. I don't think Nagal quite has the advantage on the feet like Ragason did. Ragason, especially at the end there, was I agree. really going um, to town on Buzakis. That being said, I do think he has enough advantage to to cover this line and win rather handily. What is it? Four and a half? Four and a half points. So, you know, Correct. take down, ride out, riding time, escape. I mean, he doesn't need multiple scores to, to cover that line. And he's really good from the top position. I feel comfortable in a in a Nagal finish. Sion, you were saying uh, chat? Chat's got something to say? I was saying uh, the chat was saying uh, Davis by pin. Wow. <laughs> we have a we have a, that's a singular person in the chat. Sport, the, <laughs> he said the chat is saying. The chat that. is saying. <laughs> yeah, everyone is agreed. There's yeah. you know, hundreds uh, of people watching yep. on the chat, but they all agreed. Avery Gaiman, I don't know who he oh is, but he's gosh. like Pin. He only talks. He's a uh, yes. he. In many ways, he is the chat. When you look at the volume of posts <laughs> he puts in there, he has I gotta quite give, a few. I got to give him a call out. Avery Davis, I agree with you. Avery Davis, that's his name. <laughs> All right, Avery Gaiman. Sorry. Um. Okay. Thirty-three. Did everyone pick? Did JD pick? Uh, JD. Yes, yeah, Nagel. So we all said everyone's gotten to go. This is Ben is Man. executing his strategy. Hey, th there was a question. I picked first. 
There was a question about, but you know, I was gonna pick. There was a question about uh, Nagal's finishing in there. I don't. Well, we don't have the questions. Could he slow a little slower on the finishes? Yeah. A little methodical. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah. There? What was it, a specific question or? Never mind. We'll just go to forty. No. Well, it's because he, he I scrambles a little bit more than a lot of guys. A lot of times he doesn't go. Yeah. Your your baseline sprawl push off go behind he'll he'll get in a scramble so it'll take him 30 seconds to finish a shot or yeah. he'll end up in a stalemate which is why i think there's a chance this one is maybe close and buzakis can be a little dangerous from bottom so if nagao slips in legs mm -hmm. buzakis sits position and kind of attacks him from bottom a little bit things yeah. could get a little dangerous but i, think I actually the guy was able to i thought the same thing but i didn't i didn't act on it in my picks because the way he was sitting Ragason. And I know Ragason and Nagao are not the same skill level on top, um, but he got two reversals and maybe almost a third against Ragason. And the way he was sitting that leg in is like he must be able to generate so much power there because most people are not able to sit the leg once it's in like it was with Ragason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's super powerful. You know, I was looking at yeah. something. I'll probably do something more like, um, I don't know, comprehensive on, on this, but I was thinking about like freshmen – their performances this year and like how they're looking and you take someone like Nick, I think is a great example. I was just looking at the Ohio state guys, Geog, Buzakis, mm -hmm. and you'd be like, ah, not, not, not doing that great. This top recruiting class, Nick Buzakis is in his redshirt freshman year. If you take out all these bonus COVID year guys, he'd be ranked seventh in the country as a freshman, like right on track doing just fine. But because you have all these extra dudes that would not be in this field otherwise, then it makes him look like, and a lot of, it's not just him, it's all these freshmen are dealing with the same thing. But because yeah. there's so many extra guys in there, it looks like they're not performing as well. So we, you almost need to recalibrate but, a little bit for some of these freshmen, in my opinion. And take, also, take out all the doctors. So, <laughs> it's also, <laughs> you're, prior to this year, and maybe it is because of some of those guys, but I think look back, 15 years ago when we would say right now even with those guys and he's top 15 that's pretty good yes for a redshirt freshman with the ability to you know push for a podium spot Agreed. and we're looking at a, a, a freshman all-american which we would say is good and then graduate you know x guys yeah. and now we're looking at a high a and then two years potential well, finalist well, let me get, champion. Uh, let's get shane's thoughts he's about to say something well, you got a really good point, Christian. I was talk talking about this last week. I don't remember who the heck I was preparing for, but I thought to myself, when this guy was a freshman in college, the other guy was in seventh grade, yeah. middle school. Wait, he, who? That's what's the, ben, seven that's years, only six I guess. years apart. Or six, yeah. I mean, it, it, it happened. Well, it's seven because it, one's a freshman. Okay, even, okay, eighth grade. I mean, can you imagine being an eighth okay. grader? Can you imagine going to a college dual mate as an eighth grader? You would you would never think yourself like, oh, I bet I'll wrestle this guy someday. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> How is he still it is here? Crazy. Yeah. Hey, at the same time, does it even really matter anymore? Because you got true freshmen that's ranked number one in the in the weight class. Like, you know, we you got, got high Ryan. school kids who are ranked number yeah. one in college. So yeah. it, it, I don't think it, even though you have a couple of doctors in the weight class. If the guy is good, he'll, he's good. He's going to go out there and beat him. It doesn't matter anymore how old you are. Yeah, I agree with that, too. And honestly, yeah, but, but Chris last show up we a really talked good about... Point as far as the field. The field is altered based on all the COVID yeah. stuff. I mean, you got That's Dayton. Fair. You got That's a fair. world silver and a world gold medalist in his weight. Senior world gold, <laughs> senior world silver in his weight class. Yeah. And they're, but, neither uh, of them are ranked number one. The right but now. I would say for Nick Buzakis, though, is he has losses to... I just looked it up because I knew it wasn't great. Uh, Vincent Centennialo, yeah, uh, Tyler Knox and uh, Julian Farber. So it's a lot, it's not like he's like you know only lost to Ragason and Fix and Vito or that. anything, he's kind of had some not as great losses. And like you know, Santaniello's lost to high school kids this year, wow. so that's true. Very, very so good many. ones, obviously. Yeah. It's almost like I don't even ding them, I, I don't literally not one iota <laughs> do I ding, do I ding Luke Stanish for losing to Jacks Forest. Look, Here's the crazy thing about the Forrest Stanish thing. Stanich is narrowing the gap. He's gotten so – those two – so he, they wrestled last year. Oh, they wrestled previously, yeah. They wrestled last year, and it would have been a huge upset if Stanich had won. And he drastically 
narrow the gap. And in some way, I mean, if you watch that match in regulation, you're like, how does Stanich not finish one of these takedowns? He was so close so many mm -hmm. times to get in that finish. He just couldn't quite do it. Um, so he's, he's I, I mean, I thought he wrestled really well to expectations. Jack's force is just a, just a unique situation with him, Blaze, Bo Bassett. These guys are just really special. What was the score last year? I never saw that match. I don't recall the score, but it wasn't, wasn't as competitive as it was here. Yeah. Um, but okay. it, anyway. So moving on. Tangent. Thank the, you. The, maybe the marquee matchup of the weekend. Yeah. Uh, Jesse Mendez, Bo Bartlett. And you guys kind of gave your opinion. I did not give it earlier. Um, I think. Maybe Mendez is able to get one that that Bartlett can't sneak out of, right? He is he's pretty tricky. There's many times where he gets close to him up a takedown and does not give up a takedown, or close to losing and gets one at the end. Uh, I'm gonna go Mendez on this one with a very low amount of confidence. So I I'm going back and forth on this one. I think I am gonna ultimately pick Bo, but I was thinking about Rec Hall, and and Shane knows this, Ben knows this, but like it's a crazy yeah. place to wrestle. But Mendez is that kind of psycho. He's, He's that kind of guy emotions. that is going to – it It could be a positive for him. I think that guy <laughs> is crazy enough to love the heat and the hate he's going to feel in that atmosphere. That's why I'm like – I'm just sort of throwing out the, the home mm -hmm. dynamic because I think he's just that kind of – I think he's wired that way. Um, I'll take Bo, though. I think Mendez is going to be salivating after uh, not getting his his all region Sergio Lemley matchup last weekend either. Yeah, yeah, he's he's going to be fired up for this match. I, Mendez could go out; he could send a real message if he goes to if he goes to Penn State and he beats Bo and it's solid. Then it then it pulls right back. You snap right into focus. It's Real Woods and it's Jesse Mendez, and that's the only, that that's the threat, right? Um, or I don't maybe know if I'm just, ready to say that, I'll, I'll toss Bo in that mix yeah. too, just because. I'm not saying Bo this is a disqualifier. I'm not saying it's a disqualifier for Bo Bartlett if he loses at home to to Jesse. Far far from it, because with Bo, you know it's going to be a, probably a one or two takedown match every time out. He'll have adjustments to make, but I, I think r right now you could say it's two, three. Maybe it won't change anything at all in that perception, but. Um, I feel like Real Woods is gonna have a hard time, or Bose would have a hard time with Real Woods every time. I'm gonna say Mendez wins this one, and Bo will win next weekend. Wait, next week? Well, in oh, against Real Woods? Oh, against yeah. Iowa? Yep. Oh, that would be. Oh, really? Yep. That would be interesting. I think he's gonna be going in there motivated after this loss. Okay, minor setback for a major comeback. Predict Sion Williams. Yeah, what an eight-day stretch, right? Golly. I mean, if you're Bartlett, you get you get you get three and one in eight days. Welcome to the Big Ten. Yeah. Uh, Wait, the three. Who's, who's the third one? Who's the third one? I'm saying Mendes oh, is right Three and third. one. Three and one. Yeah, three I think and you said one three in the rankings. And yeah. Yep. Got it. No. Got it, got it. Okay. All right. So you guys both pick Bo. Yeah. No, I, right, went I, 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 I went Mendes for this match. Oh. Okay. Sorry. Miss her. Guys, Case who's first, leading I, your okay. pick em pool at the moment? It doesn't matter. What are the is winning in Shane Sparks? Who's, Why you got to even ask a question like that? Hey, who was winning in the, at the end of the first period of, uh, Shane, you know, the NCAA? Shane, no. I won eight weeks in a row. They finally beat me last week for the first time this season. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. I said, they didn't have me on the show, Ben. <laughs> CP kept the door <laughs> I locked. Know, I would love – you could have a, a Gothard-esque type of line. I remember one time he missed like – he literally missed like 15 out of 15 – I don't remember that. Bad. I don't remember that, man. No, not you. Uh, Keith, Keith Gothard. You, I mean, oh, I'm Keith saying Gothard. you could potentially replicate that. I, I'm, I believe in you. All right. Hey, we need we need uh, CP. Can you and I make an executive decision right yeah. now? Uh, I'll rule JD. So JD has the fourth pick in this duel is Kasich versus Demilia, which may not happen right. and is like not all that exciting. With you, I think we should make it. Greg Kirkland versus Absolutely. Nick Feldman. I put a note in How the How many points, though? How many points? It's got to be like... Six and a half? Yeah. Six? Six? So, like, I didn't include that because, like, we all are going to pick Kirkley to win. Not if... Well, let's make it enough points. All right, if the line's 13 and a half... Okay, well, I picking? can make the line for any match, and you would have to think about it. Yeah. How about eight and a half? How about eight and a half? Seven and a half because that's a major. Yeah. Seven and a half in the, is a major. I love it. Okay, so who all do you right, pick? seven and a half. So, it's Kirkley minus seven and a half. I'll take Greg. Uh, 
I think yeah, Greg Kirkley is a absolute monster. He is a mon- He is so big. Uh, <laughs> listen, here's the thing: if Greg gets an early takedown, watch out because then that's- Feldman's got to come, and then then that's when it can get really ugly. I think Feldman's going to struggle on bottom too. Oh, absolutely. He can't well, go under him. He should yeah. not go. I thought, not. Were, I thought you were going to make the point. Early takedown, Christian, means he's going he's to be ridden the whole first period. Well, that too. But uh, yes, that. But also, it, then, because the, uh, the ideal game plan here for Feldman here as, as, a, as a non-coach who doesn't know what he's talking about, you, you don't want to be out there shooting early. You, you want to close first period get to the third period and be within a takedown or so and, and see what you can get yeah. with it with a counter go behind reattack type of thing but if you if you give up that first takedown and then you got to start attacking i think it's going to be uh i think it can snowball and some of these matches have snowballed for feldman this year and i don't think it's an if he's like when he gives up the first takedown I say it's going to be a manger. God, you're such a homer. Gosh. No, I'm going to. I wouldn't be surprised on the manger. I won't uh, be. It's going to be a manger, but I won't be surprised if it's a tech fall in this match. Also, boy, in a manger. Oh my God. See, see, so are you predicting like uh, 53 to zero for Penn State? Is that no, what you're predicting? I, no, no, I said I gave Ohio State 41 and 49. Oh, uh, okay. God. That was big. Can't call him a homer. That was Can't big. call you. <laughs> Just going with the facts. That's true. Sion may have uh, picked more Ohio State wins than I'm going to predict in this tournament. So I after leave. watching what he did to the Air Force kid, man, that was oh. bad, huh? That was bad. I, 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 I am going to go Greg also. Turk Fleet. JD. Dang. Yep. Man, we should have made it bigger, huh? We should have made it like nine grades. and a half. Yeah, we probably let's should. Let's do let's go. Let's go redo it at nine and a half. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just keep moving the line. <laughs> I want to see, no. see where it flips. Yes, but once you make the bet, they can't change it after you they make the can, bet. They kind of can, actually, though. No, no the match has not started. The, the JD, you don't started. sound like you know anything about gambling. If you make the bet at <laughs> minus three and a half, they can't change it. They actually your, can't. They can't change but your bet. We are, we are both the house and the gamblers. We're yeah. both sides of this party. <laughs> That's a good thing. All right. Um, do you guys want to talk about any other Ohio State? Uh, Just do the, 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 the team line. I forget what I said it at. 74 is interesting. Oh, you did. You did. Uh, but it's kind of similar, though. It's like Starachi Smash, probably. Starachi Smash. But what what kind of – how competitive do you think Rocco can be here, Shane? Yeah, I think there's a chance of it, for sure. I, I like how he competes. I mean, I, I, I like him a lot. Um, you know, Carter Starachi is a different kind of animal, but um, – yeah, I mean, I, I just I like I like Welsh, but I, I don't. That's a pretty tall task to expect him to beat Starachi. Right? It's, another, it's another thing too, where I think if he gives up first takedown and has is yeah. underneath Starachi for a long time, it's trouble. Yeah, we saw last week that's, getting mm-hmm. out from my bottom against Griffith. Yeah, that's uh, the case. Yeah, I think a there's tough. a chance though that he's able. He's actually able to stay in the hand fight. A lot of people get overwhelmed mm-hmm. with Starachi's hand fight. I think Welch maybe I'll stay in there. But yeah, I think if he gives up an early first takedown, he ain't getting off bottom and and he might get torched. But I think there's also a small possibility that he's able to frustrate Carter um, a little bit and and you know stave off some early takedowns and make him work a little bit. I could see a decision here. A lot of Nelson Brands esque yeah. match. Yeah, now he was coming yeah, off an injury like there that. in that one, so that one gets brought up a lot. But he was injured, but um, but he's been dealing with something this year also. I, I think That's a true. decision is. I, I only bring this up to say this could be a, a decision for Starachi, which I think is kind of notable, given yes. what we've seen him do to everyone else this year. Does he have a mm-hmm. Does he have a decision this year, Ben? I don't think so. I don't uh, think so. I thought there so. was one that was kind of like surprising when I looked. I don't I think, think he was, was that. I think no, him and Aaron had a hundred percent. Did they? Yeah, you sure. He does, right, I'm got all bones. No, eighty-seven and a half. Eighty-seven and a half. Really. Oh, no, he has a CMF. No, because it's like a medical yeah. forfeit or something like that, right? Forfeit doesn't count. 100%. He only has, yeah. I guess, two good guys. So the only, he wrestled Nico Incontrera from Penn, and he wrestled Whitlake. Also, uh, Makai, which doesn't go on WrestleStat. That's not going on WrestleStat. That's correct. Um, okay, cool. Uh, dual line is negative 21.5 for Penn State. I will go Penn State. Penn State. Penn State. 
Sion wouldn't. Hey, Sion's got the Bucks bigger. covered. I got Penn State, man. What kind of question is that? Because <laughs> no, he, no. remember he gave him a tech fall. He's got him picking up he's, with he's bonus. He's got him picking up with bonus. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. It'll be tough if All they right. win, too. Back to back. So Shane's going to take his private jet from uh, State College Ooh, to uh, Iowa to get there in time no, to I'm announce not, that I'm one not also. Doing Penn State. Yeah, I'm just doing uh, Michigan Iowa, the second one. Oh, really? Hey, hey, before we start yeah, that match, yep. uh, I got a funny story about uh, Drake Ayala. So I'm at the. Oh, uh, boy. I'm You'd at, be nice. Oh, no, it's nice. <laughs> I'm at Tulsa Nationals uh, two weeks ago, and I was watching on my iPad the uh, Big Ten triple header. So uh, this guy comes up behind me. Hey, the Iowa match is next. Uh, are you going to be watching that one? He's like, no, nah, it's an Iowa match. I don't think I want to watch that one. <laughs> He's like, come on. He goes, my son's wrestling. I was like, oh, what weight class? He goes, 125. I go, he goes, I go, Ramos. He's like, yeah. I'm like, cool. So here I am. I was like, all right, watch the match with you. I put up, put it up on my iPad, and then I'm like, yeah, here I am cheering for Ramos, thinking that's his son. Turns out it was Jake Ayala's dad. <laughs> <laughs> I was like... <laughs> You know, you know his little you brother tried to be polite, Sion. You can't help it. He uh, tricked you. His little brother won Tulsa. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah his da- the dad was out there, but then, you know, we just we laughed about it because <laughs> we were sitting there and like, no, nah, my son's uh, Drake. I'm like, oh, oops, yeah. good match. Oh, that's it was a good match. Drake's awesome. Yeah. Please. All right. Didn't you like look at his T-shirt? He probably had either an Iowa or a Seabolt. No, he didn't on. have any Seabolt gear on. <laughs> but the, at the time, Iowa? Did he have Iowa? No. Iowa shirt? No. Mm. But I thought it was just funny that we we're sitting there like, ah, oh, crap. That is funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so and you look funny. at Iowa's. Didn't they have uh, what Kennedy's brother? And, and there was another one. I'm, I'm Drew Voinovich, Ayala right? And Voinovich. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that Iowa team is going to be, you know, same last names for a good stretch. Well, good, you know, at least a handful of them. Some of those guys are starting. Things aren't going well, is my prediction. Those those don't. Yeah, those aren't. I don't think those are going to be the linchpins of the of the Iowa roster moving forward. But we'll see. All right. Iowa, Michigan. Let's get this. Really, I, I just actually finally scrolled down through all the picks, J.D., Holy crap. I don't know how we're going to finish this. Buckle up. Uh, buckle up. Uh, I guess maybe we're going a two and a half hour show today. Uh, Ayala versus Diagostino. Ayala minus one and a half. What do you guys say? So this was kind of Drake's breakout win as a true freshman when he beat Diagostino at Northwestern. I, I think Drake covers this. One and a half is not enough points to get me super nervous. Diagostino on the mat is always concerning because he's really good on top, but Drake's Drake's been able to pass that test before. He's he is much better than he was two years ago. I don't know if I can say the same about Diagostino yet. I don't know. I have not enough data. I think he regressed a little. Maybe. He's battled yeah, so many right. injuries that you don't know if it's regression, is he injured, he's been at it a long time. I, I don't know what to attribute it to, but his results are, are not quite what the, what they have been. Like the old man beard yeah. though. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> the juxtaposition of him and Braden Davis was hilarious. It got like memed a bunch, but Braden Davis is easily the most babyface wrestler in America right now. McCrone competes. I don't know, man. Yeah, but... yeah, that's true. That's a good one-two matchup with those. Boy, I know. <laughs> that's true. That's the all. That's the all middle school matchup. This is a Tulsa Nationals this matchup. All, <laughs> Tulsa Nationals. Um, honestly, you know v- Virginia Tech when Ohio State went to at the beginning of the season, their fans were. Uh, Chanting middle school McCrone. Yeah, and then he freaking beat Ventura. <laughs> that backfired. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, I don't know where we're at. Oh, 25. So, yeah, I have Drake covering. So, same. Drake. Drake, Drake. Okay. Every, I L for everyone. All right, one thing. I'm going to pick Drake. Ragustin. No, you, are we letting him do picks? No. Yeah, he he, he can voice his opinion. My opinion, I'll, I'll go with Drake. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, Teske versus Ragason. Ragason negative four and a half. I'm gonna go Dylan Ragason. He's looked great this year, and I was then eh, at 33. I bet they go Shriver. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't want to do a double pick here. I'm not, I'm not trying. Well, to... it's Ragason versus whoever it... I will put on the mat. I know. I don't like that. It's like... I don't think it really mat. Like I think uh, the spread would be pretty similar either way, though. I yes. I think it matters because Teske can get turned like a top, and Shriver's a little more solid. I don't know. It's like. They're they're different nope. wrestlers. Shriver's Make a little harder to Christian. score on. Make it. No. Yeah, dude, you gotta pick. It's, <laughs> it's he has it. He put a slash in here. JD did it. It's official. 
It's Slash. Slash was Guns N' Roses. Uh, I'll take... Uh, I'll give Dylan also. I'll go uh, Teske for Iowa. Iowa. You're going to Iowa. I'm going to Iowa. Okay. Regis no over Teske. 41. Uh, 49 would be... I'm sorry, 57. Jared Frannick, Will Luan, Frannick, two and a half points. It's a lot of points for old Will. That's, he finds I'll tell you exactly what... I think it's four four to two. Fanny gets one takedown, one escape, and uh, Luan gets two escapes. That's I think it's a 13 12 That's a, blo- uh, sh- uh, shootout. shootout here. I would bet Yappy all soup. my Bitcoin on that one. Okay. <laughs> Dang. All right. Well, I got a shot. I bet. 4 2 Luan. I got Luan. Yep. Luan. You hate Luan. Iowa so much. You pick uh, him to get the, <laughs> win the takedown. 4 2. Frannick. One takedown. I, I, I will pick Luan to cover. And lose to Frantic. Overtime covers. Over Sudden t- victory covers. So know, just to be okay. different, I'll, I'll go Luan. Thank you, Jay. Wait, Wait, I, I said Luan, Luan though. I oh, I'm sorry, Frantic. We all picked Luan. Okay, you're going Frantic. All right. Um, Michael Caliendo versus Michigan, Bowman or Camamine. Caliendo minus two and a half. So. I, I really I don't know if I can't remember what we oh wait, but this was before the show we we're talking about this but I really feel like for Michigan they have to get one of these fifty seven or sixty five to win the duel that's I think there's a lot of pretty set winners and losers I think they need one of these two I think Cam needs to wrestle but I just haven't seen that fourth place finisher Cam I mean the guy that beat Alex Marinelli did all these things this year I haven't seen that guy I haven't seen the guy that beat Dean Hamity. He hasn't looked himself. Caliendo, you throw out the David Carr match, which you should throw out, you know, that that's a different category. He's looked really strong this year. I have a hard time, you know, predicting him to win or predicting Amin to win. So I've got I've got um, Caliendo. Covering is where it gets tricky because two and a half, it's like, man, dude, what do you that, – that could go so many different ways. But I'm going to take Caliendo to cover here. But not a ton of confidence in that, but I do feel like he wins the match. I think this is the one of the ones where Caliendo wins this one, and then Luan, not sorry, Cameroon steps up at Big Ten and Nationals like he always does, and uh, wins it handily in those two two places. Interesting. I am also Christian. going Caliendo. What up, Shane? You so you you think Michigan needs fifty seven or? Yeah, would you say 57 or 65? Yeah, I think yes. they need one of those two because I don't think they're getting 25, 41. Uh, I don't think they're getting, um, you know, oh, what are the other ones? I don't, I honestly, 97. Yeah, 97. So I think they need to get that one, one of those two because I think I was winning 25, 41, uh, 41, 57, 65, and 97. But it could come down to bonus too. Yeah, that's how it's I got be, it. Yeah. And that's JD, thing. what's your pick on 65? I don't know. I guess I'll go Caliendo, but okay. I don't know. Is that a toucan on your hat? Yes. I was really. Did you get that in Mexico? <laughs> no. Where'd you get that? Uh, it was a gift. It's a toucan with a. Uh, he's he's uh, got a couple Guinnesses on his, on his beak. Oh, oh there you go. Lovely day for a Guinness. <laughs> All right. Another uh, maybe executive decision. I hate this line on the next one. He has this Patrick Kennedy versus Shane Griffith. Griffith's minus two and a half. And I think that's preposterous. Really? You think Griffith stunts I think it should be like even. Oh. You think it's a pick? I mean, Griffith has not. I mean, maybe one point or something, one and a half, something to that effect. There is no scenario if that's a pick that you would pick Patrick Kennedy. Get out of here. Well, after watching that so Penn State match. Then, yeah, he did not look good there. He, if he hadn't gotten that reversal to that guy's back, you know. <laughs> Terrell Bearclaw, if he was wrestling Patrick Kennedy, I'd be like, I don't know who I would pick. That guy is really, really good. Bearclaw's really good. He's yeah. very good. Yeah, this is not some, But, you know, you know Shane Griffith's a national uh, champ, three-time all him. You know, it shouldn't have been that close. I know. I, I, I don't disagree yeah. with that. Yeah. I mean, so Loren, he's got the loss of Lorenzo Norman. Listen, let me just read you some stats for Shane Griffith. And let me remind you, I kicked him off Tier 1 Island. You guys allowed him. I booted him. 5-3 <laughs> over Michael Wilson. You guys don't even know who that is. 
four one over Sal Perrine, lost to Lorenzo Norman, overtime K DeVos, two to one over Terrell Barrowclaw, two to one over Rocco Welch. Throw out the Lorenzo Norman, uh old school, can't count it. Also, here's a bunch of W's. <laughs> you said JD. You, can't, you said can't come into like nine matches today. I well, love that. Norman is nine and seven this year. He's nine and seven. Nine and seven. That wins the NFC East a lot of years. So you can't yeah, now act God. like that's you bad, too. Ben. Stop, you two. You give me a break. I love this. I love this new angle of of JD. We need to start just having this uh, segment of does this loss actually count? And JD's like, no. And he just comes well, up with the doesn't, doesn't, doesn't count. Yeah. Christian, let me throw this in there. You talked about those two weight classes. If I had to sum up this duel in one match, I think it's 174. Okay. I think 174 is huge in this duel meet. Huge. It could be. I Maybe in my mind. Maybe I'm an idiot. Um, the chat wants to know why we're skipping over 145. Is that a foregone well, conclusion? Well, it's not a weight class. <laughs> it's the one, sorry, 140, <laughs> 149. Is that a foregone conclusion? Uh, Conclusion, Gomez, text him. Yeah. Oh, I, don't I don't know if he'll tech, text him. Ratchy stuff. That's the thing with uh, – and yeah, I was going to circle Ratchy's back tech. to that because I, Gomez certainly could – I think he's going to win and probably easily, but Ratchy really fights hard. Is he going to get give up bonus in a duel where not giving up bonus is really going to matter a lot? I think it's decision. Really? Yeah, it's possible. Only if he runs. But what – yeah. I don't think Ratchy's going to run. In that case, he's giving a bonus. <laughs> All right. We'll see. It'll be a good duel. I think it's something a like at match. the Wait, end. What did Gomez hang last night or last week? 17, 19 points? He something was like that? Unreal. He's so good. So good. If so Ratchy good. wrestles him, he's getting teched or, or pinned. Yeah. You might be right. Yeah. I mean, Maybe. Dylan D'Amelio was I could all see American. A, a scenario where Gomez comes out and scores, and then late, he, he needs one or two. Um, like one takedown for the major, but then at that point, Ratchy knows the assignment. Yeah. And, and doesn't engage too much and loses by like six or seven or five or something like that. Shane loves Austin Gomez so much. I want to give, I want to give him some time. I just, <laughs> I, I love Austin Gomez. I mean, I think he's the most, <laughs> he, he might be the most, he's definitely one of, he, he's so complete. I mean, he can. He comes out quick. He can hit four. I'll give you. I, I told this to Andy Hamilton the other day because we always have these baseball debates, and Andy hates bunting, and I don't love it. But sometimes you got to bunt. Austin Gomez can hit a 450 foot home run, and he can lay down the perfect bunt. I mean, he can hit you big, or he can be death by a thousand paper cuts and shred you. And another thing I love about him, he doesn't really scramble. I never see Austin Gomez scramble because his finishes are that good. I'm just, I think he's just, I love him. I don't know. He scrambled in that Andoni match. Yeah, that that was. Didn't didn't go well for him, but he scrambled. Andoni? No, Zamboni, I think. Um, Bryce Zamboni. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, that's a really good point, Shane. He is really efficient with all of his finishes. Uh, And I think you love him because he's actually wrestled. He has the unique distinction of wrestling for two Big Ten teams. So that's double. Yeah, the he's love. trying to do the uh, the Soriano, right? Soriano won a couple of Big Ten titles, cool. right? Did he? Did yeah. He, win, he won at Michigan. Did he win a Big Ten title at yeah, Rutgers? Yeah, he did. I think so. Yeah, yeah. he did. There so you he's go. He's trying to do that. Um, um, all right, guys. You guys never made the same Griffith pick. I guess we'll leave it at two and a half. And at two and a half points, I'm taking Patrick Kennedy. So is the match? It's in Iowa or Michigan? Michigan. Michigan. Okay, so the Carver Hawkeye crowd is out of it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say Shane pulls it off by one. I got I don't know. It's the, the line yeah, is two don't, and a half. It doesn't matter, Ben. Uh, I'll take, <laughs> I'll take, um, I'll take, I'll have Griff, Griffith covers. Man. Ooh. I'm going Griffith just because Ben scoffed at the line. Yeah. Spite, spite, <laughs> spite, spite gambling. I love magic. it. It always right. goes well. It always works. <laughs> it literally always works. All right. Do you guys have, a, you have, a, you have at heavyweight. Uh, ben Keeter, Bradley Hill versus Lucas Davidson, but you have the line only if Keeter wrestles. I like this. And mm-hmm. if Keeter wrestles, you have it negative seven and a half for Davidson. Ben covers. Yeah. Keeter. After last weekend's unmotivating performance by Andrew Davidson, Lucas. I feel similarly. Him too. Any of the Davidson family. Yeah, Andrew honestly was worse than Lucas. 
He can do anything. <laughs> Throw Keith in there. Yeah, Keith. Is, is this a Keith scenario just had where the we started no champ. Is this a scenario where we start yeah. at 125 and Iowa weighs in both guys, have both get ready, and then if, if they they pick game time decision, you think that's one, one of these scenarios? I think that makes a ton of sense. I, for sure, they'll probably bring them up. What do you think about this Big Ten rule, Shane? You can only bring three extra guys. Isn't that crazy? You got to get that changed. I don't know if Shane heard me. Never mind. Shane, are you there? Shane? Barks? What's that? Oh, the Big Ten rule where you can only travel with 13? I think that's a bad rule. I, I think that's what the rule is. Yeah, why don't you get that changed? I'm not positive on that. Somebody told me that once, but I'm not sure if it's if it's true. You should just publicly shame them on the broadcast until they change the rule because it makes no sense. Well, I can't believe, Christian, you made it damn near an hour and you haven't publicly shamed uh... – Shane Sparks was changing his stance on the three-point takedown. Oh, I changed my mind. He can change his. If I can change, I'm, well, and you can change. Yeah, Rocky <laughs> Balboa. <laughs> we all can no, change. And I, and I, I didn't love it. I, well, I did not love it oh, when, it, when it first came out. But I also <laughs> said, we'll give it a shot. And I hope, I mean, I was hoping it grew on me. And, uh, I mean, I for the most part, I like it, which is good. Uh, the, only, the only thing I really, I mean, I, as much as I love seeing guys score points, I don't like the quick tech falls necessarily, but that's just me. Really? No, yeah, that's one of the here. best features. Yeah. That is one of the best features. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> it's kind of hard. You love it. You are a sadistic son of a gun. You just love watching dudes get tortured. You're like, nah, he's not finished yet. I want to see more of him beat down. <laughs> here's, here's, here's what I would tell you guys. The, the one thing that makes me a little nervous about it is I just think that gaps are going to keep widening. I mean, I don't like... You know that's why I'm I'm super excited about tomorrow with with Michigan Iowa. I have no clue who's going to win that duel meet. Yeah. No idea. And uh, as much as I, you know, we know anything can happen and this and that. A lot of duel meets at the end of the day are somewhat. You got a pretty good idea going to a duel meet. A lot of times, who's going to win? And I hate that. I like going where it's like I have no idea. And Iowa, Whoa. Iowa, Michigan. I have no clue who's yeah. winning that duel meet. No idea. I'm gonna Shane, say aren't Michigan. Those separate concepts. I mean, I I love it's I love impressive. competitive matches. Also, I don't want to watch non-competitive matches. But I mean, there were the to me the most boring matches uh, in the old scoring system were the ones that were they were non-competitive, but the person could not get to the yeah. tech fall because yeah. it was hard on, on a two and one system. Yeah. It's really yeah. hard to get to a tech fall, and now it's like. Man, I don't think I watched any tech falls this year, and I was like, ah, I want to see him get beat down some more. This is not enough. I need more. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. All in all, I like it. I mean, all. I mean, I, I am. I'm glad I like it. I mean, I'm. I, I didn't want to. Uh, you know, it's maybe a crazy analogy, but I'm one of these guys. Like, uh, if I vote for somebody for presidents and they don't win. I'm not praying to God the other guy sucks for four years. Where I'm yeah. like, told you this. I don't. I don't want that. I want whoever. I saw you posting on Facebook about job. that the other day. Yeah. What's that? I said I saw you posting on Facebook about that the other day. I, I don't remember. I, really? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. so I, I, that's with you. <laughs> so I'm glad I like the three point takedown because I'm thinking when it when it first came out, I didn't I didn't hate it, but I I just I was I didn't like it. I think reversal should be like me. you hated it. I feel like Shane hated it. I, can, we can go back to the show. What show was it? I think it was a strong disdain. Well, well you can yeah, find it. it. Disdain. Well, I'll tell you this. I quickly I quickly shifted my mindset, though, because I thought to myself, if I'm going to broadcast <laughs> this, I, I I mean, you want it, you got you to make it positive, right? I don't want to be like, oh, God, you know, every time I get on, they're like, oh, I hate this two-point <laughs> takedown. So I kind of – So you say you I only didn't... like it because they're paying you. <laughs> no, I <laughs> – I uh, I just shifted my mindset. You can, yeah. I like it so far. I like it, which is good. I can't. I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at the three point takedown. Okay. Because I think I think the mat wrestling has still been really good. I thought it was gonna 100%. take a lot of the mat wrestling away, but I think the mat wrestling still well, been really good. Well, hasn't taken it away, but absolutely. It's deval- you were correct in the fact that it's devalued the mat wrestling. Christian is still in denial of this fact, while it is easily mathematically and logically provable. Uh, he's still in denial. No, no, because there was this fake narrative that denial. the mat doesn't matter anymore, and it's all—it's a takedown tournament. It's ridiculous. It doesn't matter as much. Ridiculous. It doesn't matter as much. It, it, it is, is factual. Not. It it takes the writing time out of it essentially because yeah, you know it, it, it's it definitely good. 
puts emphasis on the feet. No, it, it yeah. puts emphasis on the feet, no doubt. No yes. doubt. But it's but the mat wrestling has still been been good. It, it puts emphasis on the best things in wrestling, turning and takedowns. That's where the that's where the highest incentive is in the sport. Well, now you're changing your argument. No, no, no. Definitely not. Okay. All right. Definitely not. So we'll we'll just say you admitted you were wrong. It's no, okay. you <laughs> it has not played out how you thought it would. It is all everyone just the What do you mean? I said I said escapes. And ride time would be devalued. And in fact, they are because Nick Feldman can win a three to two match uh, with a singular takedown. And that's happened multiple times, for example. Good. Guys are no longer have to choose bottom in here to get that one takedown. Unless you're, <laughs> never mind. You still, still choose bottom. I don't know just why choose bottom, bottom anyways, just because it's fun. Cause it's so easy. Cause, it's cause a, free give up a ride Shane, time point Shane, and it's an a escape. free point. Oh, I'll, I'll never buy into I that. I know. I mean, <laughs> crazy. I mean, anybody that says anybody that says that an escape is a free point is crazy. That that I have no. It's it's a free point if somebody punts on a position and says here's a free point. Yeah. Which, which sometimes makes sense too, mm -hmm. right? All right, Iowa negative two and a half. What do you guys say? <sighs> wow, that's really tight. So, yeah, that. It feels kind of like another one or two point duel either way. Mm. But I'm leaning Iowa to win. But I feel like they win by one or two. But I went Guys, I, I got a stat for you. I got a stat for you guys. So I think I'm right on this, but I'm not positive. So maybe I should shut my mouth. But uh -oh. I think Iowa's dual meet record in the Big Ten in like the last 70 dual meets, if you take Penn State out of it, I think it's like 70 and 0. Okay. The last team to beat Iowa, I believe, that wasn't Penn State, was uh, was uh, Michigan in, I think, 2018 at Carver. Whoa. Hmm. Interesting. Why don't I remember that at all? Uh, it feels like that's they came they down have to 70 Big Ten duels in that many years. Interesting. I mean, people talk about all the great Penn State stats, and understandably so. But you look at Iowa, you take Penn State out of the Iowa stats, and they are juggernaut. I mean, can you take Chris I mean, Pelton out of my stats, Shane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, JD, what was that? real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. JD, how yes, many? Those, those, duels, those matches don't count. They don't count. Don't count. <laughs> JD, can you also not count? Yeah. Shane's going to take them out of stats, and JD's going to tell me they don't count or they don't for, matter. And the reason <laughs> why. I, I'm actually counting that one. I'll, I'll, I'll count down. I'll allow it. This is crap. Yeah. Well, the one where he, bar he barfed on you, did you lose that one? Yes. Yes, he did. Okay, I was there. If you get barfed on. Shut up, CI. <laughs> JD. <I was> there. <laughs> JD. You got to admit, if you get barfed on, that's a sad boy hours one. You literally are wrestling with vomit on your yeah. back. So that one doesn't count, Ben. So we've we got rid of one of them. There's still maybe others out there, but there's one. I think I was at just about all those matches except for one. Probably one of the duels you were okay. at. I wasn't at one of the duels, but I was at all the other ones. You're, Bobby sent you to scout. Uh, we had plenty of tapes yeah. on Ben Askren, you know. <laughs> well, how many times? Except you never beat me. <laughs> I never lost to an Iowa State guy. He tried to get all cocky about it, but then probably you pinned all the Iowa State guys. Because Wes Roberts didn't go there. Wes Roberts did not go there. I think my bonus rating against Iowa State was very high. Yeah. See, see, he uh, I have Iowa, Michigan. Though. I did. That is, that is factual. Um, Iowa, Iowa versus Michigan. I have 15-15. Uh, I think it's, there's no obvious majors. Uh, I think maybe the most likely is Gomez, mm -hmm. but I think the most likely thing is that Michigan wrestles a non-starter because they very rarely seem to get all 10 in their lineup. And I don't find that to be the case for Iowa. So I'm going to go Iowa covers this. I, I was kind of in the same boat. See, I don't know. Cause even if, yeah, non, non-starter, I mean, I think Limley will be back mm -hmm. real. I think Real Woods is probably as likely to – maybe this isn't as true as Gomez. Maybe a similar percentage. Maybe Gomez is slightly more likely. Um, but I have it 5-5 five, five also. So mm -hmm. if I have it 5-5, five, five, I don't know how I don't take points with Michigan. Even though I think Iowa probably figures out a way to win. Um, but something about it, I just feel like Michigan is just like – in a duel, they're just a little less – because 
it's so rare that they actually get all all their best guys in there. It's yeah. like it's like if you go look through their dual history, it's like it's probably only a couple where they have their ten best guys in the lineup. Yeah, I think after last week Ohio State match, I think they have all ten in there, and it's a trap match for Iowa. <laughs> yeah, I'll take I'll say Michigan. Michigan. Co- I'll say Michigan covers the um, plus two and a half. Comes down to Gomez's bonus. Yeah, could happen. We'll be, uh, be a fun JD. Goal. Who you got? He said Iowa. JD already okay. said Iowa. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh uh, man, we only have twenty two minutes left. Uh, what are the best? Do you guys want to keep going in order, or do you want to skip to, like, Missouri versus Oklahoma State? Do that. Yeah, because live on flow. Missouri versus Oklahoma State, live on flow. Go ahead. We have Noah Certain versus Troy Spratley Certain minus uh, three and a half. Dude, this guy's so crazy. He pinned this guy in a minute last time. Outside step, over under, put him on his back. Yeah. So he'll probably try that again. It's going to try tricks. a mixer. I feel like Spratly is one. I feel like I'm bad on Spratly. Spratly's kind of hard to score on. Yeah. I'm going Spratly uh, to I cover. I am too. <laughs> Certain, if he doesn't bully out, sometimes he does get in those really close matches with good oh, guys. Yeah. Like uh, he went uh, was it overtime with Jory Volk earlier this year, and I think it's a similar one. I think Certain pulls it out, but it's close. Yeah, I've got, I've got uh, Spratly covering this one. I'm going to go with the same scenario as you guys that Certain wins, but it's close. Bro. Sprout's got to be weary of the, the mixer. Yeah. In the, the throw, though. Uh, Fix versus Cade Moore. I think Fix is going to try to get the bonus, of which uh, I think it's probably likely that he gets it. And I, I know uh, Cade Moore had great moments against uh, Vito, but Dayton's good. He's a little more solid. The line is five and a half, right? Sorry. F- I'm sorry. Yes. Negative five and a half. Uh, Dayton covers. Dayton. I thought I made it a little higher. I thought maybe I would trap y'all into taking more. I thought I said it at like seven and a half. But that may have had me thinking, but man. Dayton major. That would have me Dayton's just been getting the majors against major. these tough 33s. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Travis, T. Travis versus Brock Mahler. Uh, and this is a battle of Columbia natives. Mahler negative two and a half. I like the points like here for Travis. Two. I have Travis covering this. He's good. He could win this match, and I get points. I'll take it. Yeah. Man, watching that um, Cornell match last week, man, Mauler gave up some take takedowns that I was like, man, I don't know. I might have to go with Travis on this one. I think yeah. he's still reeling so, from last week. I don't know. I don't think Tra- Travis is really good, but I'm not sure if he's going to be able to duck Mauler the way Shapiro yeah. was able to. Shapiro's a little bit of a different cat. I, I got Mahler in a close one. Yeah. And so you, who are you taking cover, with the but point? I, I got Mahler. I'll go Mahler. Yeah. I went with them last I'm gonna week. Go Mahler also. Me, I'm sticking with it. I think they. I think they wrestled in the club together. So I'm gonna say Mahler's got to have the big brother on him a little bit. Could be. Uh, yeah. We got Keegan O'Toole, Isaac Lesnick. You got the the line here is high. You're trying to make me not pick Keegan. Uh, negative minus eight and a half. Yeah, it's interesting because coming off the weekend Keegan had where he had two kind of close matches, although he did bonus he Julian. Um, he ended up bonusing Julian. It, I, so, Carr was a good matchup for Olenek because Olenek gives up his legs a lot, and yeah. Carr's a great finisher. I don't know if Keegan's going to get in as much as Carr did, but if he's on this bonus mission, which I think he is. I, Hopefully he is. It's, I, I think he could get it. Um, but I went eight and a half, not seven. I and know. Half. I'll take Olenek to cover this. Uh, he he got beat pretty badly last week. I think he salvages a little bit. Maybe it's exactly an eight point major for for Keegan. All right. Well, I'm going Keegan. You're going Olesnik. Let's ride JD. Keegan. Dang it, Keegan All major. Right. Let's do it. I don't. I don't I, <laughs> hey, but. There was a request for you nope. to do a, a, a John Smith impersonation of him coaching up <laughs> I saw that. for Keegan O'Toole. What, what do you say? Uh, Co- oh, Coach Smith, I, I, I got Keegan this week. What do, you, what do you think I should do? Oh, man, this, this kid, he, he scores a lot of ways, and he wrestles really hard. So, Isaac, yeah, I ain't got no good advice. You're just going to have to go out there and fight. <laughs> <laughs> that is probably what he would say. He, John loves Keegan. He said, yeah, like, his freshman yeah. year or, like, early sophomore year, he's like, this is the best kid in the country, like, maybe pound for pound. Yeah. Um, yeah. So 
Try something like that. See how it's going. That was that was good. That's good advice. That's good. <laughs> people want to, hey, right. Ben, people want to know when did you become the moderator that got to keep the show moving? I know. Because you guys, they, they these hoity toity uh, guys, they you know, be sitting there a little. Oh, I got my feet up on my little chair here, and I look so. <laughs> so you're saying right about when JD and CP got too fancy, huh? Too fancy. Well, when we got soft in this new studio. It's not really that. It's just that having a laptop on our laps would look ridiculous and stupid. So it would. Do you guys? Do you guys need to just have like you know something on the wall where it, the search statistics come up and you guys know all the stuff? So I became the moderator. Yeah. And we get right. what we get. Pretty soon when we have like all like the Google glasses, then we can just be yeah. looking at screens. And read each other's minds. Mm-hmm. Oh. All right. Uh, plot versus whiting. Plot minus five and a half. This is, this is tough because I'm having a hard time unseeing both plot destroying Feldkamp and then the demolition Foka put on whiting was also notable. So yes, with those agree. things... Five and a half, not enough points. Give me Dustin. I keep falling into well, a trap. A lot of the ones I'm losing, I'm picking the right winner, just not the right margin, and I'm counting the winners a little short. So I'm trying to like revert that a little bit, and like I have to recalibrate everything with the with the, a three point takedown. With a three point oh, takedown, and I don't know if that's it entirely. But um, so yeah, I think I, I got plot winning this. He looks really good. He's a beast. Uh, He's so good. I don't disagree, but I uh, contractually I can't pick against AWA wrestlers, so I'll go Clay. We gotta get. Hey, listen, JD, that's our way. That's how we get back in this. <laughs> All AWA lines. We gotta, listen, we gotta get Mulvaney and just in make there. them like make them skewed skewed against uh, yeah. where it should be, just so I have to pick the AWA. And then guy it's just the you and line. I duking it out. <laughs> He's got, uh, you know. Who's the Purdue guy? When he goes to like opens, we gotta just like Grayson. Yeah, we have to look at his Grayson's time starting. I'm sure he's wrestling. Grayson this Clark. All right, we gotta get Grayson in there. There's other guys. Who's Purdue wrestling this weekend? I don't know. All oh, Wisconsin. Oh wow. Sunday in West Lafayette. Okay. Back to Oklahoma State, Missouri. I'm going. Who'd you take? I'll go Dusty. <laughs> dusty plot. Dusty plot. Yes, you guys scam scam me. Guys, on that line. Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Purdue, then be Ramos Barnett. That'd be good. That is good. Do Ooh, we have a line we, for that? That line is in here. We have a line Let's for that. Let's go right to All it. Right, ben. Last one. Well, we did we got one more in Oklahoma State, Missouri, which I think this is a bad line. Me too. Um Doucette versus Elam. Uh, that's too many points. It's minus two and a half. I'm going Doucette because I think Elam wins, but it's a super close one. Yeah, I agree. Let's ride, Zach Elam. <laughs> See, if you put it like that, Ben, he almost yeah. always will take the opposite. So <laughs> I've got a couple of different. I need JD to put all the AWA guys in the in the lines, and I need you <laughs> to insert all the lines. lines. And that is my path to victory. For most people, if they pick last, it's <laughs> in their favor because they get to hear reasoning before. With me, it works yeah. against me because I will then. <laughs> I use no logic and I just spite, spite pick. Spite gambler. I love <laughs> it. Or I'll just be like, oh, you two with this. I'm going to go different. This guy, hey, Ben, when we were playing dice, uh, he kept yeah. uh, he kept quitting playing dice, but then he would see Spay win. We were playing dice at Ollie's. He'd be like, all right, I'm back in, just so he could add the opportunity to. Well, y'all were playing dice? Stuff. Yeah, we play dice. At, we play dice all the time. You didn't invite me over? On? No, it's not my bear cave. It's all, You got to take oh, that up man. with Ollie. They didn't want to take money your sometimes. money, huh? Well, I didn't even know we were playing <clears throat> dice till I got there. It's called CeeLo. Do you know that one? Man, come on, man. I'm from the hood. So you do know that? I know, you know, we, we walk with dice in our pockets back in the day. <laughs> That's beast mode. <laughs> CeeLo one. Yeah. <laughs> If a game of Monopoly breaks out, boom, see on ready. Oh, we used to play that too in college. We used to have some killer Monopoly nights. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. Was Kale was Kale any good at Monopoly? Uh, I was, got cut off oh, for a second. Was, he wants to know if Kale was good at Monopoly. Kale didn't really play much. Heskett was, you know, Heskett was the one the ones that uh, always wanted to sit next to the bank. He uh -oh. was just like a crook. Everyone knows that guy. Some and nobody was looking. Yeah, it was. Always, Heskett was not the most untrustworthy person with the bank. <laughs> <laughs> my oh, Monopoly, dad, like. <laughs> my dad did this thing, and I didn't catch on. It was actually we were on vacation, and it was the whole family and Katie, and we were playing. And then he had one of the properties, like whatever, say it was Boardwalk, but it wasn't Boardwalk. 
and one of the community chess or chance cards set like go to boardwalk advanced you to it and then so it kept happening like sort of often and then katie like figured out i was like wait a second and like totally busted my dad for doing that and so well he just got put it by the top yeah, he just kept uh, he would just like fumble with it and and uh, and shuffle the cards, and then next thing you know, whoop, advanced the boardwalk, and then K- <laughs> me, my brothers, of course, but Katie, she's smarter than all of us. She figured it out and uh, busted that no uh, good scoundrel. <laughs> all right, Ramos versus Barnett. Ramos minus a point and a half. Oh man, I go Ramos. How? No, no logic, nothing. Just it's not required in this. Flip one. a coin. Yeah, this wait, you go, Ben. Uh, it's a flip a coin. I'll go Ramos also. I'm gonna say there's gonna be some funky scrambling in this match. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. if you want some logic, Ramos is now ranked number one, so he will probably lose. <laughs> I'm gonna go Barnett. <laughs> I'm gonna go Barnett. <laughs> that's the best logic. Uh, yeah, you are right. What happened last? And it, it was. His Caleb Smith match was weird, though. Did you watch that one? Something yeah, we, weird. I think we talked about it on Monday, like where they, that, that takedown call that they then waved off was the way they did that was really bad, and then the cut where he cut him and took him down, but they never gave the escape was also a little yeah. questionable. Yeah, um, I'll take Ramos. Guys, when I when I was calling that, I got I'd have to go back and I got to go back and watch that again. I got confused on that because I'm like, oh, escape takedown, and I'm looking at the score. And I must have been looking down, but I was I, I, that that confused me that call. Yeah, because I thought I thought it was escape takedown. Well, you were were you broadcasting remotely there? Yeah, that's yep. harder too because you're just you, you can't, can't take, see the referee. You can't take yeah. it all in the the same way. Yeah, you yeah. guys do it. That's but, uh, I've I've done that a few times. I think it's really freaking tough to to not the key be there is you just got to be quiet. Like, I mean, I just shut my mouth because I just don't want to, you know, I'm just like, I'll let this play out. It's on TV. You can see, you don't necessarily need me. Right. Um, but I got, I got confused on that one. Cause I'm like, I thought it was a take. Cause I thought it was a takedown escape. Yeah. I thought it was escape takedown and essentially it was nothing. Right. Right. Yes. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Like I was like, what? Yeah. I remember that one spun me around a little bit. Yep. Okay, what that else? That was a crazy man. I mean, they had like a 45 second scramble in there, too. Yes. That was like, just watch it. Yeah. Uh, well, there's a few picks left, but I think we only have 10 minutes left. I think we should go to questions because we did no questions on no, Monday. No, I, I don't. I, I like getting, or I at least want to talk about the matches in there because I feel like we we get so like Iowa, Penn State. Right. It's like that's like the entire show. There's like some other good you matches. Don't, you don't week. love our fans anymore. You're not going to no. answer their question. Well, I do. I love them. No, you said Dude. no first. Arizona State, Oklahoma we State. We have answered a few There's, of their questions. There are so many good duels too. Arizona State, Oklahoma State. You've got um, we didn't West even Virginia, talk about that. State, West Virginia, Iowa ones. State's fun. Um, okay, but fine. Do you want to do the picks? All right, we can do the picks. Let's go. Uh, it's quick, rapid fire. We have five left. Etchemendia versus Titus. Etchemendia minus point and a half. Etchemendia covers. Point and a half. Needs really? To not double leg him. He needs to body lock him. Yes. Etchemendia. I I feel similarly. You know I'm going with the cyclone. Uh, we know. Waters versus Swiderski. Pick them. I'll go tie. Swiderski. T- Waters is a beast. He's been so he like I don't he like leads the country in pins or something like that. He's like up there. Yeah, I haven't watched too much of him, so I have a hard time. He's really good. This match. I th- Casey's gonna have a hard. T- if Casey can finish on him, he will win. But I think that's going to be the struggle for for Casey. What is Waters' right. lungs look it's like? It's probably good. They both have good tanks. I think it'll come down to like the mat or some weird situation. I think this is a crazy close match. Mm-hmm. If it comes down to the match, I got to go with Waters. Yeah, Wierski still struggles right. in the mat. I'll go. I'll go Waters. Hall versus Carr. Hall, Carr minus four and a half. Carr covers. Manger. I think Carr covers no problem. I'll go Carr covers also. That may be Hall's close match with Keegan. No. Would trap some people, but I'm going Carr as well. I will not be trapped. Manger. You no cannot trap me. All right, duty. Spratly versus Figueroa. Pick them. Figs. Back on the Yep. Back on the horse. Same. I think um, he, he's close to healthy again. He just he hasn't He needs this win. He hasn't had yeah, the the opportunities the past couple weeks to, yeah. to wrestle the good guys like the guys in the Big 12 and the Big 10, 
of been getting, so he takes advantage of this opportunity. Absolutely. Mitchy Figueroa is four and two on the year. Yikes. Wow. But this is oh, the year man. to be four and two at a weight. It don't matter at <laughs> that weight class. Mm-hmm. Just get qualified. <laughs> All right, last one on the picks: Lachlan McNeil versus Ryan Jack. Jack minus a point and a half. I have been. I literally pick Lachlan every single time, and I get it wrong every single time. Every single time. So this time, I'm going Lachlan McNeil. <laughs> no, you don't do I'm it. Doing go it. Jack. I'm doing it. Oh my god, you're an idiot. I, only I'm going for Jack. entertainment. I I'll agree with CP. Yes. I go Jack. It's a rarity. I agree right. with CP. There you go. <laughs> Hey, all right, we got seven minutes for questions. Well, did you know? Did you all see um, uh, Rob Cole talking about NC State oh, yeah. going mini viral kind of again? It did, yeah. So, no, I you missed know, it. when he got hired, um, I did an interview with him. Who's number one? He's like, There's a natural order of things in North Carolina, and you know, UNC is the top dog, et cetera, et cetera. What NC State's had its run, but it's our time, and then. Um, then Andy interviewed him. We're just giving all this fuel for to, to the Wolfpack fire. And it was basically like, you know, the NC State's done a good job of taking wrestling fans and making them NC State fans. But these people aren't. He's like, they, they didn't go to NC State. He's like, so we're going to convert and make them UNC fans. So I, I love the banter. Now, he's got to take some medicine in this duel meet because they're not ready to win this duel by, by any stretch. But I love the banter. I think it'll eventually be a, a great rivalry, which in a sport that could desperately uh, need another one. So I'm, I'm excited about it. But... Coach Cole's going to have to take take it on the chin. But he's very calculated. I think he knows where he stands this year. You could also tell he said it a little kind of yeah. in jest. Like, he's having a little fun. He's not, like, actually, like, talking he, crap. I mean, he kind of is, but not, he's like, crap. super down on And I mean, he's got a point. Like, just if you look at, like, funding, you know, number of students, um, just athletic. Brand. Athletic brand and department the colors he history. talked about. He goes, "Why would any you want their red when you can wear that beautiful baby blue?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it, it was good. It was all in fun. I like it. Um, it, it wasn't mean spirited. Not is what all. I was trying to, no. to get at there. And he knows, you know, yeah. that rivalry is going to heat up. And it's going to be really good. It's going to be awesome. And it's fun because now you've Great got sport. um probably especially in a couple of years UNC. I, I think we probably are all saying. Uh, they're going to improve the next, you know, couple of years. NC State, I don't see them downturning anytime nope. soon. And Virginia Tech now has emerged as as a top fifteen program as well. So that's a and fun little ACC tribe we've got going on. Keith Gavin at Pitt doing a good job. Yep. Yep. They're tough. Man. Okay. We actually did it's answer awesome. quite. A, I'm, I'm going through the questions. We actually answered kind of a lot of the ones. Just see? I think we had them in our mind throughout the show, and we kind of answered them. Lefty Strat wants to know uh, what's the best steakhouse in Jewel, JD. Ooh, so you got to go outside of Jewel. No steakhouses in Jewel. Best steakhouse in Jewel. It's the names. It's it's the kitchen. <laughs> um, Babes in Radcliffe is going to be your closest one. You can get a good steak there, or you, the Open Flame in Gilbert. I would say if you don't want to go all the way to Ames, you you got to go to to one of those two. Okay. Hey, Guys, so I know of my pick. Real quick. Big Tens oh, uh, at Maryland, Luna Steakhouse. Yeah. Luna. All right, we'll All check right. it Luna out. Luna Steakhouse. Um, hey, Shane, Glad this guy's Luna asking us for tens. advice on best tacos in Madison. And I don't, my place that I love is Taqueria Guadalajara. I think it's amazing. You have an advice for this person. Is that in Madison, Ben? Yes, Madison. Yeah, I just uh, – I mean, there's a couple of places. I mean, I like tacos no matter where they are. I mean, I don't really. That, that's like any taco place Did to no me pick? is a ten out of a ten. Wow. <laughs> no. That's that's not no. true. Taco Bell. Hey, Shane, you stop. I love tacos. I mean, <laughs> I love them. Yeah, I, I've never. Guys, listen. I've never had a bad taco ever. You are so full of crap. <laughs> I, I haven't. There's some terrible taco places. Guys, I'm, I mean, I, oh I, hit, I I went to Taco Bell this week. It was good enough. <laughs> yeah. You know, it was good right. enough. See, this is good, Shane, because, uh, you know, Ben always talks about being like uh, we're being pretentious because th- we have a cool studio. But really, he's being taco pretentious. You are the more pure taco lover, Shane, than Ben Askren, no. who t- gets on here and talks about his love of tacos. You love all forms of taco. Oh, absolutely. What about Taco Taco? There's a good taco. place in uh, Chicago. The, I think it's called the Velvet Taco. On, uh, oh, yeah. Right. 
on or off of Rush uh, in Chicago. That place is really There's good. There's one in, on Congress here in, in Austin. It's good. Mm-hmm. It's kind of hipster taco. Seems like yeah. like Ben would be an angel investor of Velvet Taco. It's very. I had it last I, Friday actually, night after I the duels, actually. Have, yeah. Man, I just cook. There you go. And Sion <laughs> cooks. All right. Keep it's coming the, with the questions, Ben. How crazy the real slings is how crazy it would it be for Ohio State and Iowa to only win a combined two matches against Penn State? I don't think this is going to happen, but I also don't think it's going to be a big number. It might not be a big number. I mean, I think Iowa. I mean, next week's Iowa, Penn State, so we're going to be talking about that a ton. But yep. 25, 41, 41. Are, are right there. 49, you know, I, I, you don't, I don't think you count out Ratchie. Uh, but then yeah. it gets tough. It's you know, Fran, Fran, it could. Battle. Fran, it could. I mean, Caliendo, I don't know. I, what we've seen from Mitchell, it's tough. It'll be a battle. Pick. It'll be a battle. A battle, yeah. Mm-hmm. But then stud. 74 up is just – Ugly man, when they yeah. 57 up for Penn State is just it's ridiculous. ridiculous. It's ridiculous how good they are. One of the best teams ever, it, they really are. And it's, it's crazy. The... Shane Van Ness was ranked like one or two to start the year. Two, one, I think he three, four, no, yeah, I don't, top I don't five. <laughs> I think he was third. I think he was third to only well, he, plays, he plays third. Um, but yeah, but Ridge yeah. came back, yeah, but he was ahead of yeah. Henson. So he's like second at worst. Yeah, that would um, be sure. So regardless, they lost a title contender there, and I don't think they have one with Kasek, um, though he's good. I think he's an All-American contender. What, ben? All right. Last thing. Okay. Is some of the fans, they want Shane to host a meet and greet on Friday. This you know, Friday? Fans want to meet you, Shane. Yeah, what do you think? Some fans want to meet you. Maybe you just have a little meet and greet or something. With you got to go Spartan. through his agent. Yeah, come on, you know, come on down to uh, Chrysler. I'll be there. Come and say hi. Love, love meeting the people. It's always good. Shane said he's buying the first round at the local pub, so meet him there, and he has a tab open. <laughs> yep. Just say, put it on Sparks. <laughs> hey, before we go. Uh... It's going to be a great weekend, guys. So many great Seriously. dual meets as we've been talking about. This Incredible. Be a great weekend. Yeah. We got one minute here. One thing I wanted to bring up, because Jordan Bros doesn't tweet a lot, but when he does, it's normally very interesting. And he had two good tweets. Well, I'm going to get to one this show. He asked about sport specialization um, for kids. Ben, I think we've talked about it, but just want to yeah. get your take again. Can a, a high school athlete, I think he said high school, um, be elite in one if he's doing multiple sports? I thought this would be a long discussion, so that's why. I should we save it? Should we holster it? I kind of feel like we should save it because I kind of think it's a little bit longer It's an evergreen a topic, too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, exactly. I agree. And you should ask someone that was good at two sports. Ben Ben was only good at he was, <laughs> he was only a world champion in hey, one of the sports he did. Top ten in the world <laughs> disc golf, baby. Oh, that's true. You can't forget that. Yeah. And we can't forget that that is okay. actually a sport. That is a sport. It's a, you know what? Okay. Anything with a frisbee is, is a that sport. The Olympics? Ben Askren could be like the no, first guy should, to ever make it should be. They have way dumber sports in the Olympics than frisbee golf, I'll tell you that. It, that is facts oh my right gosh, there. Oh gosh, some embarrassing sports. And so, Ben, you might be a two time Olympian when it's all said and done. What a story <laughs> that'd be. That would be awesome. Uh, that would be yeah. awesome. Well, that's it. We're out of here. Keep it to Flow Wrestling this week, and we have, we'll keep you abreast of everything that's happening. Big 10. Live on Flow, we've got Missouri Oklahoma State duel. Yanni versus Nick Lee wrestle off Saturday. Going to be incredible, along with the other wrestle offs there. Thanks to Shane, Ben, Sion, JD, and especially you for tuning in. Thanks so much. We'll be back Monday. Come heck or high water with the usual crew. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time. Peace.